Hello everybody, it is Caleb and I want to make a video today on how to create a RGB lime or the same concept applies to any RGB amber fixture or RGB white fixture. And this would be using a similar method to the DMX plugin um, that Unreal Engine offers um, using that system and just adding to it as we go. So I do want to thank my Patreon supporters for uh, keeping me busy and uh, constantly suggesting things that I should build. Um, this one came in through a YouTube comment. Um, but I also did happen to make this LED tape recently. And uh, I'll show that after this video is done. But basically you could adjust your pixel pitch and choose between pixelated or frosted um, pieces. So let's get started with RGB lime fixtures. The first thing you're going to do is open up your content browser and I'm going to dock it in my layout so I can just use that one. Go to your engine content down here and then go to plugins and find DMX fixtures and you're gonna go to the light fixtures folder so engine plugins DMX content fixtures content and light fixtures and if you don't see that make sure that show engine and plugin content are enabled go to the where is it it's like light fixture oh I'm in light fixtures here we are you go to just BP static head and this would be like say if you want to make an RGB lime par or Lico and what I do is uh, I'm gonna not use this folder anymore because it's old but I'm not ready to delete it yet and so I made a folder inside my fixtures folder called copied engine content so we're going to go down to here, find that static head, and then copy it to our copied engine content. Now we have a version of it that we can copy out from, and if this ever gets modified, we're not going to modify our engine content. So we're going to create a new folder. I'm going to put my LED tape in there. This is going to be called generic. And then in here, let's copy this static head to generic. Now the first thing you want to do is to patch your RGBL fixture inside your light console. And so I've already done that. Remember to select it and then turn it on because if you have it at zero, you're not gonna see your DMX values. So I'm looking right now at 469, 470, 471, and 472. Make sure that you can see these values going up in your DMX activity monitor. And then the next thing you wanna do is build a profile for, um, for Unreal Engine to receive this fixture on. And so for me, I'm going to go to my DMX folder and my master library where everything else is patched. And then I'm going to add my RGBL fixture after deleting my RGBL fixture that I created to research this. So we're going to go new fixture type and it appears down here and just double click it and say something like RGBL, whatever it is. With that selected, we're going to add a mode. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this four channel. You don't have to name it anything actually. We're gonna add four functions. And these four functions are what's gonna get called on our, what's called an attribute map, or everything that gets pushed to the fixture. Our four values are going to be red, green, blue, and then the last one, if you're building, it doesn't matter if it's a lime, amber, or white fixture, none of these matter. 
Um, if you add a white, it's not going to make it white. If you add amber, it's not going to make it amber. If you add another color, it's not going to change it to that color. Just don't add red, green, or blue because you've already done that. And so you basically just need something that you'll remember to call it on the other side. I can give it white or I could give it burst, whatever the heck that is. So I'm going to give it the attribute white and then save it. Now that we have a profile for this, let's put it in our fixture patch. And by the way, what I've been finding on this fixture patch is that it seems to always take the first fixture or often take the first fixture and give it its first mode. And you have to constantly change that back. I don't know why that is, but hopefully it'll be fixed on an update. So we're going to add our RGBL fixture by just hitting add fixture, fixture type RGBL. Mode is the only mode. And I am going for address one dot four six nine and I want to patch in three of these fixtures so let's add that fixture patch in and then we can save and we see them right here now we can start modifying our blueprint now that our fixture is going to receive DMX so the first thing we want to do is just test the DMX um, but to do that, you're going to need to modify this with one thing. And that is that these have components in here. The color component is what you're using for our R RGB, red, green, blue. But our dimmer component is still waiting to be called to turn the light on. But in our fixture type, we don't have a dimmer attribute. So we need to modify this component in this blueprint just for this just for this one blueprint and we do that by just turning the minimum value and default value of dimmer to one we can save that and then drag it into our world and then after we do that go to DMX patch tool And with our proper library selected, assign it our RGBL fixture and hit address incremental. This will patch it to that fixture patch and also enable DMX and the part of the event graph to run while you're in editor. So now I'm going to go to my console. And just modify these values a little bit so that I can see it working. Okay. Everything looks good on the RGB levels. So now we just have to build in one channel. Now, because this dimmer component works like that, and this color component has four DMX channels, you would think that if we add white to this it would just give us a white light but unfortunately that's not the case I'm gonna drop my RGB values to zero now and turn up my fourth fixture or my fourth color and you can see that going up in the DMX activity monitor along with blue but the white does nothing and that is the same for amber and uh, basically any color except red, green, blue. You know, let's go on a quick endeavor. I think the problem is that it's only, when I say color component, it's only taking these first three channels. I don't know how to get it to take the fourth channel. But here's the workaround I made for myself. I don't think this needs to be anything. We just need to get between these two value, these two nodes right here. So what we're gonna do is make our own value attribute map. So mind you, this occurs every time the on fixture patch 
the, every time this fixture patch is received. No other fixture patches. So if we unplug this, now we're not getting any colors or any attributes. If we right click this value per attribute map and split it, and then type, drag out from it and type make, we can create a map. And so if we add in our three pins and say this is red, this is green, and this is blue, and then give these some values, like let's try to make the light purple. So red and blue are red, green is zero. Now if we change our DMX value and cause that to be triggered, it'll make the light purple. Now once again though, if we give this a, let's say an amber parameter and change it to full, you'll see that it doesn't, it's only doing the red and green at point one. It's not doing the amber. So we're not gonna use a fourth key Instead, what we're gonna do is find our red, green, and blue values, what they actually are, and then pull that fourth channel and add a variable or add new values to our red, green, and blue value. So to do that, we're going to right click here and hit split pin structure pin as well on the on fixture patch received event node on the value per attribute. We're gonna right click here, hit split structure pin and then drag from here and say find. We're gonna make three of these. And actually we're gonna make four. One is for red, green, and blue. And then our fourth one is what I would call white or whatever you assigned this fourth function to in the, uh, in the fixture profile. So the DMX value one, two, three goes to red, green, blue. Your fourth DMX value in that instance or in that fixture will go to this white or whatever you call this. And then in here, that's received and given a float number. So what we're gonna do is make a vector we're gonna make a vector out of these three and just to show you real quick if I plug these in I can suddenly alter my whole fixture again that is the spotlight, the beam, and the lens all get impacted without having to make nodes for all of that. So that's pretty cool. We just need to figure out how to hack in here. So I have now have an RGB vector. I'm gonna take this fourth channel that in this case represents Lime and multiply it by a vector. So hit times or just type in multiply. And then on this second pin here, right click it, cha um, change it to vector, pin conversions to vector. Here you're gonna give whatever your color is. So if it's RGB white, you're gonna do one, one, one. If it's RGB amber, it's gonna be like 1.350. And if it's lime, it's going to be uh, what I call 0.4, 1 for green, and then 0.3 for blue. And then this vector gets added to this vector. Now what we've got here is a vector that will go up to a maximum of 2. And we don't want that because that could cause unexpected things. So we're going to have to divide this by two. 
Now, unfortunately for us, that means that our RGB values will be a little bit decreased. But we could always compensate by increasing the brightness of our light. So we're now going to split this on this output vector after we divide by two. We're going to split that structure pin and then plug all three of these into our values. So X to red, Y to green, Z to blue. Now we have factored in our lime or amber or white, or maybe it's a UV cell that we want to factor in. UV would be kind of hard to make out of RGB, but. And then after that, we push our normalized values per attribute map or per attribute and then leave our set visibility. Now note that if you deleted your dimmer component, I would just kind of restart. Um, well, two things. If you deleted your dimmer component and perhaps you weren't supposed to, you can find this set visibility and the dimmer component will be destroyed and you can manually drag this back in. I don't think the dim yeah, the dimmer component isn't in toggle visibility. Once we do that, we can compile and save our blueprint. And here is an overview for everybody who skipped to the end of the video. You right click this to hit split structure pin to get to that. Once we do this, I'm now going to zero out all my color values here. And red, green, blue, and our lime value gives us this lime vector that we created. So if I want to modify that a little bit, all I need to do is change these values. And so if you don't, if you're setting this up for someone and you perhaps don't want to make this a, uh, have them go into the blueprints, you can turn this into a variable just by saying right click, promote to variable, and let's call it lime color. And now this is separate per fixture instance. Oh, we have to click on this eyeball here so that we can expose it. Now we just have to go up here and find this lime color and change it. And yeah, there we go. So let's say it's more like, it's more white. There we go. So now that's our lime. Uh, if we wanted to make an amber fixture, it would operate the same. We would just have a different variable name. So now our fourth cell is amber and our colors would look something like this. And then this is also a much easier way to create an RGBW fixture because now your white channel is truly white. And your other colors add to that. So that's all. That is how you create a RGBA, RGBW, or RGBL fixture from the Unreal Engine content, uh, the fixture content, and the DMX plugin. Thank you for watching everybody. Um, if you have any more questions or you want to expand on this topic, let me know. I know this is, I got asked twice to make this, um, this tutorial for people. Uh, once was a while ago and once was recently. Thank you everybody. Take care. Hope to see you around sometime.